So today I started doing a little DIY project and then I realized that this was like one of the types of things that I would put on here that like maybe isn't a plant video. So I decided here we are. Um, I'm just making coffee and like getting ready to do this project. So you guys can see one of my favorite parts of my kitchen that I designed. Um, a little entryway mirror kind of, it's not even like a DIY or DIY. It's more just like a upgrade to make it match my interior. Um, up until now, mostly what you guys have seen is like my kitchen and it's obviously black and white. Um, everything in the house is basically black, white, and cream. Um, I made a really strong and explicit, deliberate effort to not have any stainless or any chrome in the house. Um, and that's like in the kitchen, everything is black uh, or hidden. Um, and that goes like pretty much for everything, including my utensils and my cookware. It got kind of like obsessive for a little while, but that's beside the point. Anyway, um, so the project that I'm gonna do today is this mirror and this is like a little countertop mirror that i got from ikea like a long time ago um and it's light wood so it's not there's nothing really like wrong with it um it just doesn't match the aesthetic and the area that i want it to go i don't have any mirrors in my entryway i actually don't have any mirrors except for like in my closet and in my bathrooms um so whatever about that, I just don't really have any. And I figure like having one right by the entryway um, near the door is sort of like a nice little thing to do for spatial uh, expansion. Um, it's not super like a minimal thing because it multiplies everything you're looking at, but it does help with like spatial expansion. And you can just be like, do I look like a fucking mess before I leave the house? One second, let me grab Max. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna do here my my point and my idea is just to clean the mirror um and then this the way that this one is constructed is that you can't really take the mirror out it seems that the wood has been put in and then these things that you would hang it by are actually like glued onto the frame so i don't think you can actually take the mirror out in this case because then i would just paint it and put the mirror back in um but what i'm gonna do is clean the mirror put the um, painter's tape on it because it'll just peel off super easily and then I'll take it outside and spray paint it. So another thing you guys might not know is that I am obsessed with spray painting things. Black, white, cream. I just love to spray paint stuff and one of my neighbors doesn't really love it that much but he chain smokes outside all the time so I have to deal with that and I figure if he has to chain smoke then I can spray paint and we can both deal with the other person. Can you sit while I make this video? Anyway, um, I know that a few of you other guys are really obsessed with spray painting too, so let me know if that's something that you're into. Okay, so now, like I said, there's a few things that are happening in this video. I'm gonna paint the, or I'm gonna tape this and paint it. I'll probably paint it later because I actually have to leave in about 15 minutes to go teach my morning Saturday class. Um, and I'm gonna make my second cup of coffee. So this is my favorite part of my kitchen in this kitchen that I designed. Um, as you can see, all of the cabinets in the whole kitchen are these like floor to ceiling and it basically has made it so that like everything is hidden. Lay down. Breakfast? So as I was saying, my favorite part, for, ignore the like sloshing and dog drink, drinking of water um, in the video. So as I was saying, I designed the kitchen and I wanted everything to be like sort of hidden and I wanted it to be aesthetically just like sort of a clean line. So um, this area here just looks like a couple of kitchen cabinets, but it's actually a countertop that is just for coffee making. So it's a push and open, and inside of here, I've got my um, pour over, which is what I've been doing these days, and I'm like, actually, it's my favorite thing right now. Um, I've got my filters, which I got these filters, so this coffee thing has just like a hole in the bottom, and I think I just got the wrong filters or whatever, because I got the ones that are flat across at the bottom, 
and they rip and don't work, so I've been having to double up, which I feel like is not good for the environment, but I feel like I want to use them instead of just throwing them away, and this seems to be the best way to do it. Um, I've got my soda screen that I never use, my coffee craft for if I make a lot of coffee or if I have people over and I want to make coffee enough for everyone. This is from Ikea also, and this thing is actually like a really impressive product. This keeps coffee hot, like for a super long time. Like one time I made coffee and then like the next morning I was like, oh, like rubbing my eyes and not wanting to make coffee. And this was, still had hot coffee inside of it from like the day before. Maybe like a later, not quite first thing in the morning coffee brew, but like maybe a later in the day coffee brew. And then the next morning it was still warm. So I was impressed by that. And then I have my percolator or whatever it is, my electric kettle in here as well. So I go through a lot of different phases of what kind of coffee and how I like to make it. French press, uh, stovetop espresso. I haven't done like a regular coffee machine, coffee machine in a really long time. Um, but anyway, like I said, I'm really into pour over right now. Also, there's lots of different brands of coffee that I'm into. Um, Hyperion in Ypsilanti makes, I think, one of the best coffees in general, but I will also say, that something happened like maybe a month or two ago where I went back to this like old school coffee thing that I used to do when I lived in New York, which is da, 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 canned Cafe Boscalo. So if you guys have never had this before, it's actually like surprisingly really good and it's very strong um, and it's super cheap. Uh, I still love local brands and supporting, but I've been on a Cafe Bustello pour over kick for the past couple of months and that's what we're gonna do. So, super easy. You just take a little Scooby-Doo and then electric kettle. Um, when I bought this electric kettle, I was doing French press and not pour over because this company also makes one that has the goose neck, which I know is better for pour over, but it is what it is. Um, and I don't know, I think this kettle is supposed to be a special, interesting one or something like that. Anyway, I'll just let it sit here for a second while it pours down. And in the meantime, we can just close this up and not look at it and start to tape. So, it's super important that we get as close to the edge as possible because we don't want to paint the mirror, obviously. We just want to paint the frame. And this is going to take a little while, so I'll probably speed this part of the video up. Um, but before I do, do you guys love to spray paint? How do you take your coffee? Let me know. Do you go through phases or have you been doing the same thing forever? Um, there's a few different things that are on the market. Like I've never, I've never wanted, um, I've never been interested in, I've never wanted like an espresso thing with the pods. Like the only time I think I've ever had an espresso or the things with the pods is when I'm like at the mall and like William Sonoma wants to make you one really badly. Um, instead of waiting in line at like Starbucks to get a coffee when I'm at the mall, uh, I sometimes will just like go into William Sonoma. I mean, not these days because I haven't been at the mall in so long, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but, um, or if I'm at somebody else's house who has one. But I just feel like it makes so much garbage. And even though I know you can send the pods in and they like recycle them or whatever, I don't know if you guys know this, um, but, the recycling, like reduce, reuse, recycle, is actually like a hierarchy. The idea is first that you like reduce your consumption um, of plastic or paper goods or whatever it is. You wanna like reduce that kind of stuff first. And of course, like I realize that I'm about to be like spray painting and putting fumes up in the air, but I guess there are certain things where you like pick your battles and you live your life. And one of the battles that I've chosen is, I guess in this case, compostable filters um, instead of plastic pods. Um, and then when I was doing French press, there was nothing at all. There was no paper, it's just water. Um, so anyway, I got the edges pretty good. I'll show you guys in just a second. 
I said I was gonna speed up this part of the video, but I feel like I did a way better job than I thought I was going to in getting the edges done really nicely. Um, so I don't think it's gonna take quite as long as I had anticipated. Just a couple more pieces for the inside. And then the rounded edges area, I'm definitely gonna have to get an X-Acto knife out or something like that to bust out and make them good. The other thing I could have done, I guess, is just use like a straight blade to like scrape it off and just scrape into the whole thing, but I feel like that would have been a huge pain in the ass. So if I just have to do a little bit of scraping, that's gonna be better. Um, okay, I need more water. And then... <laughs> So this is where we are currently at. The corners, as you can see, aren't done yet, but I'm definitely gonna need an X-Acto knife to do that. Um, so maybe I'll just kind of schlock it in that area and come back to clean it up, which I feel like is gonna be the best move. So yeah, I feel like there's a lot of intersections in this video. It's like, this is how I make coffee. This is how I tape and paint random things and also like i said more than anything this is my favorite little area i just think that having my blender is in there um i've got the, my juicer is like in this drawer um like any of my like kitchen appliances that i just don't want to see and have out on the counter all the time all go into that little nook of hidden area and I feel like that is one of the most like luxurious things that you can do in a kitchen um, to make it look really high end. And the thing that I will also tell you is that um, it was not like a super expensive thing to do. My entire kitchen, um, so first of all, oh man, okay. I told you guys about this in the video that I made where I was talking about like when I bought the house and all of the background about like the kaflama that happened with my architect that I had to fire and all of that kind of stuff. But basically like he wanted to charge me like a tremendous, and I mean like a number that I like, I don't know, makes one of my eyeballs twitch a little bit. Um, he wanted to charge me a tremendous amount of money to do the entire kitchen, to build the boxes, to build the fronts and to do everything. And when I fired him, or when we terminated our contract. Oh my God, I love coffee. I basically uh, designed my entire kitchen modularly through Ikea's Kitchen Builder. And actually, I'm not sure if you guys know this or not, they, I feel like this video is like sponsored by Ikea right now. Um, their whole kitchen, like everything in their kitchen line has a 25 year guarantee. And so what I did is I designed the kitchen. They also have a really cool online planner that's almost like CAD design level, like architect design, a house level software. It's a little bit like hard to understand at the very beginning, but then once you get the hang of it, it's really, really fun. Um, and I ended up doing my closet the same way also. But anyway, um, I designed the kitchen and all of the boxes, like the structure and the drawers and the frame and like where everything was gonna go in Ikea. Um, so the inside boxes or whatever, you can see, like this is Ikea. The shelves are Ikea and the walls of the cabinets are Ikea. But then all of the doors and my countertops are all custom made by local uh, artisans and crafts people. So basically I got this like really beautiful kitchen that I'm completely obsessed with, that I love and looks like extremely high end for probably like, I don't know, a third of the price that I would have paid if I would have had my architect do it. So I cannot, I cannot recommend more highly doing like a Ikea kitchen. They also have like a person that you can call and like, give the dimensions of your kitchen to, and they will design your whole kitchen for you on the phone with you. You can also have somebody come out and measure to make sure all of your measurements are right. 
um, you know, just making sure that like the length or the height or the width or whatever it is and that everything is going to fit. And then they also have a company, you can do it yourself, obviously, but they also have a company that will come out and put all of the boxes together for you too. So I could not recommend that service like more highly. It was really easy and really rewarding. The only thing that kind of sucked is that it was happening like during Corona. So there was like a pretty extreme time crunch and like a lot of stuff was on back order. Um, but other than that, I'm totally obsessed with my kitchen and I'll give you guys like a total tour one day. I'll do like a kitchen tour day. Um, for now, I need to finish my cup of coffee, brush my teeth and go teach. And then I'll come back and finish this video I'm wearing a different outfit um, to finish the mirror. And I'm excited to see, I'll show you guys what the corner of the entryway looks like, what it looks like with the mirror and all that different stuff. So for now, peace out, Boy Scout, don't shout, drinking coffee on my walkabout. I don't know. Anyway, okay, I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, you guys, welcome back. So I am back home now after teaching, uh, changed, cleaned up, and I want to um, get this mirror entryway project going you know, into completion. So um, I, before I signed off in the last video, I sort of put some of the tape in the corners. I didn't sort of do that. I did put corner tape in the corners here. And so you can see if I just like left it like this, then some areas wouldn't get paint on it. So um, I went and looked through my toolbox and found this little X-Acto knife. And I'm just gonna really easy go around the edge right here. And uh, yeah, cool. And then just peel this extra tape off so that we can get a nice clean edge and get all of that area painted as well. So um, I was thinking about it when I was taping this corner earlier in that first segment. And I was thinking about, I used to have some friends when I was growing up who during the summer they would go and um, and like paint houses like that was like all these guys they all worked for this one local dude and painted houses in the summer and I remember that one of my friends maybe helped me paint like a wall or a house or like something at some point after they had done that like summer gig. So it was like, obviously it's been a really long time since we've been in high school. This was like maybe in college years or maybe like right after college years. And I just remember that like when they put the tape up, it was like so perfect and like clean. And I feel like that's a really random, but like very impressive skill to have. Cause I know whenever I tape something, I always get like really obsessed with making sure that the line is like in a certain way, but because I haven't done that much of it, I feel like I always end up like ripping it and putting a bunch of more pieces of tape. And then like the line is pretty straight, but it's also been made with like a hundred little squares instead of just like one really clean, long, straight line. I guess you also would have to have like extremely straight lines at all of the edges of the walls and the ceiling and the floor, which I think I sort of take for granted or I used to take for granted like previously that all of those lines were straight, but really it's about like the quality of your drywaller, how straight all of those lines are gonna be, um, which is also an interesting thing to consider. It's just like the joys of, um, what do they say? The joys of home ownership. So anyway, um, random skill that I'm not like that good at. I will say that I am kind of impressed with how uh, straight my lines are on this mirror though, aside from these corners, which I knew were not gonna be perfect. Um, the other thing that I was thinking of, so if you are into spray painting stuff, I feel like a lot of my DIY projects are like a little bit haphazard. Like I'll just get something into my head and I'll be like, okay, let me see what I have like around the house. And I kind of like, like, just rig it up with whatever I've got around the house to like make the project work. And then inevitably I end up having to like, I don't know, it just ends up taking longer because I didn't have like the right tools at the very beginning. So I'm trying to get better at doing that. So to that point, this is like sandpaper that you would use for an electric hand sander, but finished products like this, for example, like this is solid wood, which is nice, 
Um, but anytime that you get something from a store that's like a finished product, generally it's gonna have some kind of like shellac or seal on the wood to give it longevity, but it also makes it very smooth. Um, and so when you paint something, whether it's spray paint or like whatever you're gonna paint it with, you want it to be a little bit rough so that the paint sticks to it a little bit. And you can sort of like think about um, like a good, a good consideration or like something that is like an everyday thing that you probably do if you're a bunch of women watching this video. If you're guys, you probably are not considering this. I mean, you might. I don't mean to gender stereotype, but like, you know when you go to get a manicure, how they like buff your nails a little bit to give it like a little bit of texture so the nail polish will stick and stay for longer. Um, I'm not saying like that you should be changing the shape of the item that you're working on. Just like if something was like, you know, if your nails got like buffed out too much, that it wouldn't be nice either. But you do just wanna like scuff it. Um, just scuff it up and sort of like make it just like a little bit funky so the paint wants to stick to it. Um, so I have these leftover like electrical sand. First of all, an electrical sander, like a hand sander, I think might be a little heavy handed for this project anyway. Um, but I was borrowing one from my sister and like brother-in-law because I was scuffing up the tile in the second bathroom. Um, because I found this weird product where you can like paint tile. So the second bathroom was never part of like this first phase renovation of the house. <clears throat> so anyway, um, the second guest bathroom was never part of like the introductory or like original renovation plan. I always sort of figured I would do that later. Um, because I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do with it anyway. And um, so I kind of want to do just like, so the bathroom was yellow tile, like very, I don't know, 60s, right? Like yellow tile for the bathtub. And then it had then, I think when they like redid the renovation, they took like the linoleum wood floor, like fake whatever into the bathroom. So that must've been the flooring in there as I recall. But I'm assuming before then it was just like asbestos tile or like something else on the floor, I don't know. Um, but just like, I mean, it's an extremely basic bathroom, like a tub that is like in a shell that like slides into the wall, you know, and they did put in like a new sort of like quasi modern, I don't know, not modern by like what my standards are, but just like a more updated pedestal sink. And they did put in a new toilet. Um, so I'm just gonna like leave those things there, change the fixtures, paint the tile, and I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do with the floor yet. But the point is, I borrowed my sister, or my brother-in-law's um, hand sander, and I really had to put in quite a bit of work to scuff up the tile in there, and I ended up getting, uh, they gave me a bunch of, of sanding sheets to use for their hand sander, but I ended up needing more. So I just have these like random sandpaper things. Um, that I'll probably use for something at some point. And right now I'm using as hand sanding sandpaper. It's actually kind of nice. I've got my like little pinky in one of the holes, like an old style paint palette or something like that to um, create stability. So, all right, this little surface area is looking pretty good. Um, we'll get the top here just doesn't it's just like really doesn't need to be really sanded down a lot it's just just scuffed just scuffed up basically to um to give it something to hang on to hmm. i wonder if i'll take this stand thing off eventually actually because this does unscrew i wonder if i'm gonna put it on the wall anyway i could probably just give up on that and that unscrews pretty easily. So let's put that over there. Um, there's a bunch of Instagram accounts, if you guys have never seen them before, for like Ikea hacks, or I guess like Pinterest boards and things like that too. But it's sort of fun because the stuff is re readily available 
and relatively inexpensive. Um, so like doing stuff to it, like painting it or scuffing it up or whatever feels like low risk. Um, hang on one second. So it's sort of nice because you can really take the pieces, especially when you get things that are solid wood, um, and you can really make them your own and spending the time to kind of like mess with them and the money that it might take for sandpaper and paint and tape and whatever makes sense if, um, if it's a product that you already had in this example. Um, it used to be like a mirror that I think I had sitting on like a dresser in my bedroom or something like that, like as a vanity kind of thing um, at my old rental house. So I already had it, I haven't been using it. It's sort of like just been existing around. I keep moving it around thinking like I'll use it for something at some point. So this is obviously, like I said, a good way to do that. But like, otherwise I guess I would have just given it away and then at some point I would have had to like buy something else. But the point is, is like, Okay, I already had sandpaper, I already have spray paint, I already have this tape. If I had to like go out and buy all of those things, plus buy this mirror, which I think maybe was like, it was probably like, I would say between like 15 and $20, then that would end up being kind of like an expensive project. And I would say like, just go buy the mirror that you want in that area. But considering I already have all of these things, it's like editing it a little bit is um, more fun and a great way to use something that like didn't have a purpose before. And it's gonna be exactly what I want, which is also fun. Okay, cool. So I feel like that is good. What we do wanna do though is um, take a piece of paper towel. I'm going a little overboard with the amount of paper towel that I grabbed, so I'll probably only use one of these little triangle or uh, rectangles, get it wet and then just wipe the dust off so that it doesn't get stuck underneath the paint when I go to paint it. So be right back. Okay, so I just got this damp and then I wring it out. It's still dripping though. So it's like, I guess I don't know how wring out, wrung out it is, but I'm just gonna just gently go over the edges that I sanded. Um, to get the dust off. And I made a little mess here too. So I'll go into an area that doesn't have dust over it. Um, what I am gonna have to do now that I'm using a little bit of water on this though, is wait for it to dry. So I'll probably wait maybe like an hour or something, um, just to make sure again that I'm not like accidentally sealing in moisture underneath the paper towel. Um, because that would not be great when I paint it. So, okay, there we go. We've got our taped, sanded frame. And as I'm looking at it, I do see a little bit of mirror coming through. I'm not gonna worry too much about it though, because after I paint it, I can go in with like a straight razor and scrape the um, paint off the mirror pretty easily. It probably won't sound great. So maybe I'll listen to music while I'm doing that part. Um, okay, cool. So I'll be back. I'm going to clean up and let this dry a little bit and then we will touch base again for the painting part. And then after the paint dries, we'll hang it up and check out what the entryway looks like. So I will see you guys back in a little bit. Peace. Here we are outside. We got the mirror taped. Um, this is sort of like a knock around outdoor table that I use to do all sorts of other things. Um, it's the middle of May, it's still very cold, so I'm wearing a hoodie, but this is like my painting clothes. Um, and I wanna give you guys a good angle. So if you don't do a lot of spray painting, there are a few things that you should think about when you do get into the spray painting um, process. And that is that you wanna take like, uh, I mean, obviously this isn't if you're like doing art or whatever, but if you are painting like an object, like a piece of furniture or whatever, you want to make sure that you don't like stop the spray halfway um, on the line. Like you want to make long straight um, strokes, brush strokes, I guess, or whatever with the spray paint, because otherwise you'll get like drips um, or you'll get lines where the paint is like heavier. So basically just, you know, you're going to go like this, straight across, straight across, straight across. So I'm just going to go ahead and get into it now. It should take 
not very much time and it's pretty sunny even though it's cold so uh, it'll dry quickly also. The paint, there's a few different brands that I use. Um, I'm using, let's see, what's the one that I have just like around the house, kick it around right now, is, yeah, Rust-Oleum. This is uh, two times the coverage, um, premium ultra matte. This one also does bond to plastic, which is cool if you wanted to paint some kind of like outdoor thing. Wood, metal, plastic, indoor and outdoor. So, um, I don't know, Rust-Oleum I use a lot. Also their, whoop, shit, well, that happened. Um, the tip is just one of these like regular spray paint tips, which I actually think is better. Um, so you can see. Some of the spray paint tips have like something that looks like a little bit more like high techy, like spray painty. Maybe it's old school, maybe it's new school, I don't know. But this one tends to like work pretty good. So I'm just gonna shake it up and get down to business. Um, remember, long, straight, and don't stop halfway. That's like the biggest advice. Max, get out of here. Go on. You don't want to be involved in this, dude. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna leave it to dry and I think the chances of doing a second coat are pretty strong. Um, right now I can kind of see the wood grain coming through, which maybe I like, I'm not sure. It's also really, really bright outside, so. Um, I don't know. I might do a second coat and, uh, and then I'll bring it back inside and we can check it out and see how it looks. Okay. All right, welcome back. So here we are, we're back inside. Um, I left the mirror outside to dry maybe for, I don't know, like an hour, maybe two. Um, it's supposed to be dry within 15 minutes. So I figured that that was a pretty safe amount of time. Um, but just in order to like protect the counters, just in case, I did put it on top of some paper towel. And it still is off gassing a little bit. So after I take off the tape and stuff like that, I might still leave it outside. I might like hang it, make sure I like where it is, um, and then put it back outside. So anyway, welcome to like outfit number three, sort of, of this video. Um, I'm just gonna bust out the X-Acto knife again in order to get the edges of this tape so that we can start peeling it off and really get a good look at what this is gonna be. I think. This is the second mirror that I've spray painted um, white in the last like year or whatever since I've moved into this house. The other one was like really, really dark wood um, and it's in the guest bathroom. Um, but that one, the frame came off of, it was almost just like a picture frame where it has like the tabs in the back. What the heck is going on? I don't know, it's a black background. You guys probably can't even tell. Um, anyway. It's like okay, and I feel like I said before in this video, that bathroom, everything that I'm doing to it, I just want it to be like all white and clean and just like, I don't want it to be really anything except for just plain because the yellow tile, it's just like, I don't know, not cute. And um, if the house was like retro or if I was more into like bohemian styling or something like that, I probably would have just like left it. There was actually a time when I very first started doing the house where I was like, oh, I'm gonna leave the yellow tile and I'm gonna make everything in that bathroom and in that second bedroom like iridescent, which was a really weird idea. Like I was like, I'm gonna make it like a unicorn room. And I started like finding all of these weird like crystal things and hologram things and I don't know. It was a weird phase, but I did get a couple of cool acrylic boxes that I use for some storage area.
from that like short obsession with everything being iridescent. So anyway, um, I think that overall this is looking pretty good. I feel like I can't really like hold it up and show you because it's really just going to end up looking like um, like you looking back at yourself because it's a mirror, right? Um, there's a little bit of tape and a small amount of like straight edge stuff that I'm going to have to get into, but not very much. Oh yeah, there we go. The tape, oh, I taped it so close that I got it like underneath the edge of the mirror, like underneath between the wood and the mirror, which means I got very close. So I'm impressed by myself. Eh, come here. I need to get some like tiny little tweezers that I do art projects with because otherwise I just end up like effing my manicure. Oh my God, I'm so close. Dear Lord, come here. Um, That's pretty good. And Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think it's gonna look nice in the corner. Uh, I'm gonna, well, maybe I'll hang it and then Windex it again because it definitely got kind of like smudgy while I was just touching it, getting the tape off. But like overall, maybe I can bring you guys over here with me. Okay, let's go check it out. And I'll give you like a funny angle so that you can, well, Anyway, that's what it turned out like. Okay, so before I go to hang this, um, it did just dawn on me that the back of it, it didn't just dawn on me, but like, so when you're hanging something that has like a, like a picture or whatever, and it's got like two like clips and then like a wire across, you sort of need to figure out where you want the middle of the art to be and generally put like two screws so that you can straighten it and it won't get completely off kilter every time like a door opens or closes or whatever. But, um, the back of this mirror, so it can be mounted either like sideways or it can be mounted up and down, but it's got these sort of like eyelet things. And this can be a little bit like tricky when you're trying to do it on the wall, because even if you like hold it up and then you're like, okay, there's the line where I want it to be, you put the level on top, getting the um, screws or the nails or whatever you end up using in the specifically like proper position is really challenging. So then I was like, oh yeah, duh, I'm gonna make a stencil. So there we go. I grabbed myself just a regular piece of paper out of the printer and I am going to just make little holes exactly where the holes are. Bada boom. Bada bing. When I am holding it up and drilling like the nails into the wall, I also don't have to worry about the weight of whatever it is that I'm drilling, holding it up and trying to balance it. Cause obviously worst case scenario is that I would like drop it and break the mirror. And then I would have bad luck and I would not have a mirror and everything else that I did to make this video, like sanding it and painting it and all of that stuff would have been a waste. So stencil. Okay, all right, let's go over to the wall and get these screws in it. Okay. Okay, you guys, well, thanks for hanging out with me while I did that sort of like upcycle project. I'm not really sure it was exactly a DIY, but it was definitely upcycle. And I think that it looks really good over there. Um, 
I can see it from a distance and I'm happy with it and close up I'm happy with it because it's not like just this huge enormous mirror um I can just go over there and be like okay do I look crazy before I leave the house which I don't know it might end up being sort of like I always look crazy but then at least I know it when I leave the house so um that's it thanks for hanging out uh this was kind of like a surprisingly long video but we hung out we did kitchen stuff we did upcycling you know we did a lot of stuff so anyway thanks for hanging out let me know if you have questions or what you think about my little entryway area um I actually repotted that monstera that was in the picture while I was waiting for the mirror to dry too because it was in the nursery pot before that's like my new little mini monstera after I repotted my big monstera um they just are such prolific growers okay I don't know I'm just gonna keep rambling if I don't sign off now so peace out and uh, I'll see you in the next one.